Hey, I just want to say it's, uh, it's an honor. It's an honor to be here. It, it, it is an honor to, uh, to be a part or attached with or connected with Breakthrough. Uh, it is, uh, it is, I'm so glad you guys got a break. Uh, it is essential uh, that pastors get away, far enough away that nobody gets to talk to them. So, <laughs> so I'm thinking Paris is a good choice, man. Let's go to the other side of the globe so nobody gets to mess with you. I like that. Um, uh, <laughs> y'all, y'all hear that? Okay. All right. So when you have an opportunity to speak somewhere else, when you're given that privilege and honor, you get to sit down with the Lord and say, what do you want to talk about? What, what am I supposed to talk about? Uh, you know, what, what should be the topic uh, that we would cover? Because I think the last time I was here, we actually did a whole study on marriage, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Uh, and, and so... Um, I think there is a word uh, that was given to me earlier in the year uh, that is what I would want to speak wherever I go only because I think it's probably the most important thing that we as believers need to know in this season. Uh, And and, and my goodness, we could make an entire list of things that are important for believers to know in any season, Uh, but I think you'll understand in a minute why I'm going on this particular subject. Tonight, I want to talk about truth. What is truth and how do we frame and understand truth? Uh, And so I'll make some statements to begin with here. God is my father. He is almighty. He is compassionate, gracious, slow to anger, abounding in loving kindness and truth. And there was no one or no thing above him on earth or in heaven. And Jesus is my savior, my redeemer, my bridegroom, the example, my commander, uh, the name that every knee bows to and every tongue confesses. He's the king of kings and lord of lords. And we know there is a three-in-one relationship with three distinct persons, I believe all worthy of worship, and there's no competition between God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. But tonight I want to talk about the Holy Spirit of truth, the spirit of truth. So I want to start with the beginning of our relationship as a church with the Holy Spirit, and that's going to be in John 14, 25. Jesus is speaking to his disciples right before he's crucified, and this is what he says. I will ask the Father, this is 14, 16, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper that he may be with you forever. That is the spirit of of truth, capital S, Holy Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it does not see him or know him, but you know him because he abides with you and will be in you. If I drop to verse 25, these things I have spoken to you while abiding with you, Jesus says, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I said to you. And then he goes on into John chapter 16 in this discussion he's having with his disciples. And he says, but now I'm going to him, God, who sent me. And none of you ask, where are you going? But because I've said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. But I tell you the truth, it's your advantage that I go away. Now, that's a great thing to say to Jesus. It would be a good thing if you went away. I think it'd be to my advantage if you went away. Jesus is saying it is to your advantage if he goes and returns to the Father. Because if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I'll send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment concerning sin because they do not believe in me. Concerning righteousness because I go to the Father and you no longer see me. And concerning judgment because the rule of this world has been judged. I've mentioned any more things to say to you, but you can't bear them right now. They've been traveling with this guy for three years, and now he says, I got some stuff to say, but you can't handle it if I tell you right now. But when he, capital H, the spirit of truth comes, 
He, the spirit of truth, will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own initiative, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will disclose to you what is to come. He will glorify me, and he will take of mine and disclose it to you, and all things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I said to you, he takes what's of mine and discloses it to you. He's going to take what God has to say, and he's going to disclose that to you. So tonight, I want to focus on the Holy Spirit of truth. And as I roll this out, I think you'll understand more and more why truth is going to become so important to the believers. But what I just read to you, it says it is the responsibility of the Holy Spirit to lead you into all truth. It's his responsibility to lead you into all truth. Therefore, we cannot know all truth without the Holy Spirit. He is the spirit of truth. We were told by Jesus that Jesus was returning to the Father. We're told by Jesus that the Holy Spirit would be sent to us. We're told by Jesus that the Holy Spirit would teach us. We're told by Jesus that the Holy Spirit would lead us into all truth. We're told by Jesus the Holy Spirit would glorify Jesus. And we're told by Jesus that the Holy Spirit would disclose to us what is to come. So if I just make a broad general statement, and this is not true of Breakthrough Church, not true of Breakthrough Church, but is true of the church in the United States. We're a very Jesus-centric church. What I mean by that is Jesus is our King and our Savior, absolutely, but you don't hear the Holy Spirit talked about as much in the church in the United States uh, because uh, Jesus is our King, and we praise Him, and we worship Him as our Lord, and He is our groom, and, and we thank Him as our Savior, but we have to remember that Jesus said... I'm going to go back to the Father, and I want you to be led and guided by the Holy Spirit into all truth. So in a, in a very direct way, if I'm not letting the Holy Spirit lead me into truth, I am disrespecting what Jesus told me to do. Whew. That's sometimes hard to swallow when you're talking in church. He's like, you're disrespecting Jesus. This is heretical. No, no, no. Jesus said, I'm leaving. I'm sending you the Holy Spirit. His job is to lead you into truth. So you've got to follow him. We've got to follow the Holy Spirit so that we can understand truth. As a matter of fact, you can't even effectively learn about God or Jesus without the Holy Spirit teaching it to you. How many of you read scriptures for years and years and years and never got it until you got it? And then all of a sudden you realize the Holy Spirit just showed me something about God that I had no idea that was true or how that played out or how that existed. I have to have the Holy Spirit to know truth. So we have to get comfortable saying, I love Jesus, he's my Savior. I love God, he's my Father. But the Holy Spirit is leading me. The Holy Spirit takes me into truth, and I'm going to learn from the Holy Spirit. This is why this scripture begins to make more sense to me. 1 Corinthians 12, 3. You know this scripture, but maybe you hadn't thought about it this way. Therefore, I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God says... Jesus is accursed. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. I want you to think about this for a minute. The truth is no one can speak by the Spirit of God and say Jesus is accursed. I can say it with my mouth. I can use those words. But I cannot speak by the Spirit and say that. If I'm speaking by the Spirit, I cannot say Jesus is accursed. You know I'm not speaking by the Spirit if I say Jesus is accursed. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Why? Because the truth is, without the Holy Spirit, Jesus is not Lord to you. I can't even say Jesus is Lord without the Holy Spirit because I have to have the Holy Spirit in me in order for Jesus to be my Lord for me to profess that. And, and so that's all set up. <laughs> that's all hopefully setting a framework for what I want to talk about tonight because I think there is an outright attack by the enemy on Christianity when it comes to truth. I think it is a focused 
attack. Our society and our world is trying to convince us that truth is relative, trying to convince us that truth is not fixed, but it's a variable, that truth can change from time to time. It's trying to convince us that whatever a person believes is their truth. So there's a their truth and a their truth and a their truth and a my truth. And society's trying to convince us that there's no absolute truth, that truth is this moving target that can be different person to person. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna explain why that's so important in a minute. So anything right now in our society that someone decides to believe is considered a truth. Whatever you wanna believe, well, that's a truth. Because you believe it, it's a truth. That's what our society wants to tell you. And, I, and I, are you okay if I just go straight at this? I mean, I, uh, listen, you can run me out of here. That's cool. Gender is not decided by what you believe. Okay? It's not. It, it is a... It is a biological, God-determined thing uh, that, hey... God formed you in the womb, male or female, only two genders, male or female. And and I've said this before at Revive. You guys will know I've said this before. But it's getting to the point where if a person were to say, I'm a cat, I'm supposed to honor the fact that they believe they're a cat. Now, I just want to say for most of us in here are adults, so we've been alive long enough to know that if 10 years ago you would have said, I'm a cat, we would have sent you to a psych, to a, to a psychologist, a psychiatrist. Why? Because the determination would be if you believe you are a cat, you have a problem in your mind because you are not a cat. Now we're getting to the place, and, and I, I used to think even a year ago, I used to think that there's not a doctor on the planet that would decide that if you think you're a cat, I'm going to surgically put a tail on you, and I'm going to surgically move your ears up here, and I'm going to surgically implant. I used to think that was impossible, but it's becoming more and more probable. I don't know if you guys have heard about this young lady in Australia uh, that literally is in the high school level and has told the school she believes she's a cat And so the teachers have been told to honor her cat-like activity. We are so close to absolute stupidity, I don't even know what to say because the problem with gender is not in the body, it's in the soul. It's in the soul. And if we don't address it from the soul, we lose truth. Let's go to another example that you're probably familiar with, Leah Thomas who is a male who is swimming at the college level in female competition. Can I just say it bluntly? Leah Thomas is not a woman. Leah Thomas is a man swimming in a women's competition. Now listen, if Leah Thomas believes she's a, he believes he's a woman, then I can accept that he has a problem. But it isn't with his body. It's with his soul. It's with his mind. And so just said bluntly, you cannot transgender. Let me say that again. It is a truth that it is an impossibility to transgender. I can no more change into a woman than you ladies can change into a man. It's an impossibility. There is no such thing in the realm of truth as transgender. Truth won't accept transgender because you cannot do it. So I go back into Scripture and I say, what do I do then when this man thinks he's a woman? I tell you what the world thinks Christians do. The world thinks Christians become belligerent and angry and accusatory and and, and they want to stop and put controls on you and shut you down. And that's our fault because we haven't approached it compassionately enough to say, friend, your problem is here, not in your body. And I can empathize with the fact that you're confused but I can't accept 
the lie. Now, now here's where I say we are going to be challenged in truth because this is true that right now what's going on in society is we're being told we have to use the pronoun that you want to use. Brian, stand up. So if Brian tells me I believe I'm a woman, then I am being offensive if I don't say, well, she's pretty. <laughs> well, she's not so pretty, actually, but she, you know, if I don't use the pronoun that she thinks I'm supposed to use, then I'm at fault for not catering. Listen to me what you're doing. As a believer, you are telling a lie. I am lying if I call you a woman. Why? Because you're a man. You said. So here's my point. I think we're at a place in society where we are going to be challenged to stand on the truth or lie like the rest of them. It's a big deal. If God said I created them male and female, then they are male and female. And I pray that we realize that this transgenderism is just the beginning. It is just the beginning. When the mind can decide gender, it can decide anything. It can decide I'm a cat. It can decide, listen to me, I'm a minor attracted person. We used to call that pedophile. It can decide I'm an animal attracted person person. We call that bestiality. It can decide I can randomly be a sexually aggressive person. We call that rape. But when we begin to get off of truth, then we begin to lie. We begin to say things are true that are not true. And I'm not being harsh. I'm being truthful because anything becomes acceptable when I cannot use truth to determine what you're speaking when I have to listen to whatever you say is your truth. And any time, if you're going to make a note, here it is. Any time you negotiate truth, you're a manipulator. That's your Facebook post. Any time you're negotiating truth, you're manipulating. So what's truth? If we're going to stand on truth and we have to know what's truth, and it's in the book of John in chapter uh, 16, chapter 16, 13. But when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth for he, for he means because he, when he, this is how he, for he, the Holy Spirit will not speak on his own initiative, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will disclose it to you what is to come. When Jesus is praying to God in John 17, 17, he says, sanctify them in truth. Everybody say truth. truth. Sanctify them in truth. Your word is truth. Jesus is praying to God and he says, give them help with the truth. Sanctify them in the truth. What is truth? Your word, God, is truth. In other words, if God said it, that's the truth. He made them male and female. So whatever God speaks is truth. That's my definition of truth, whatever God says. He's not a man that he can lie. God can only speak the truth. And how do I know something is true if God said it? And the Holy Spirit is the spirit of God and called the spirit of truth. Did you also know that Jesus is known as the way, the truth, and the life? So I don't know if you're seeing it, but God is truth, Jesus is truth, and the Holy Spirit is truth. So whatever comes from the Lord is truth. So what are the consequences? Where are we going? What's coming upon our nation if we do not stand in truth. It's in Isaiah 59. Isaiah 59, 14. Justice is turned back and righteousness 
stands far away for truth has stumbled in the street and uprightness cannot enter. Yes, truth is lacking and he who turns aside from evil makes himself pray. If you are pray, you are pray if you submit to evil. Now the Lord saw and it was displeasing in his sight and there was no justice. Why was there no justice? Why is righteousness far away? Why can the um, why can uprighteousness, why can righteousness not enter? Why do the righteous become prey? Because truth had stumbled. Without truth, there's no justice, righteousness, or uprightness. And I want you to hear me out, church. This is why, this is why truth needs to be in our government, in our schools, in our marriages, in our families, and in our churches, and in our jobs. Why? Because if there is no truth, then we have no justice, we have no righteousness, and we have no uprightness. We're headed for a horrendous bondage because as a nation, we're disregarding truth. John 8, 31. So Jesus was saying to those Jews who had believed in him, if you continue in my word, the word that he was speaking, then you are truly my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Jesus says, I'm telling you the truth. And if you're interested in hearing it, and if you're interested in hearing to it, then you will know that truth, and that truth will give you freedom. You won't be in bondage. When you know the truth, you have freedom. So let's be blunt about truth in our society. There are many areas where truth is missing, and we're in bondage, and we're leading to a greater bondage. I just talked about gender identification as one of those places where we're disregarding truth. And I just want to say it this way. Do you know that now there are an unlimited number of genders? I'll just read a few to you. Here's some that I read in an article. Cisgender, transgender, cishet, non-binary, intersex, genderqueer, gender fluid. I love this one. Gender non-conforming, gender expansive, ev um, agender. And I love this. This last one's the best, I think. Gender void. Gender void is a gender. If you are void of a gender, that's your gender. Does that sound like truth at all? Let's talk about truth as it stands in abortion. Is it a child formed in the mother's womb or not? Truth is, it is. Why? Because that's what God says. I formed you in the womb. We have no right to take that life. Sexuality. We are teaching confusion to our children. And, and listen, here's what I could do. I could go talk about all the things you're hearing in the news and all that kind of thing. I'm not. I'm going to talk about my own personal example with our own daughters and what they were taught in school. My daughters at the high school level brought home their social studies book. And they said, Dad, can you explain this? And here's what their social studies book said. You cannot know if you're gay until you try a same-sex experience. Aww. That's what they're teaching our high schoolers, that you have to try it to know whether or not you are gay. Uh, do you know that in, in that same book, I'm not making this up, we read it, in that same book it said the Bible the social studies book in the school said the Bible was in favor of homosexuality until 600 AD where it was retranslated and homosexuality was considered a sin. That's what they're teaching in our public schools now. They're telling our kids, you have to try it because you don't know unless you try it. Racism. What is the truth about the history in our country? I am absolutely 100% okay and fine with discovering the truth about how races were treated in our country. Absolutely, because that's the truth. And the truth will set us free and the truth will tell us what to do. But I'm just here to say that what we're doing right now is we're trying to solve racism by being racist. We're trying to tell a white child, you should feel guilty. That's racism. And, and, and there's no truth in that. 
And we've got to recognize that there are believers in the kingdom of God preaching a gospel to help others who are regardless of ethnicity. I say it this way. There are only two races. There's only two on the entire globe, on the entire planet, the entire thing. There are only two races, lost and saved. That's it. That's all we have. You're either lost or you're saved. News media. How many of you in the last five years have learned what the word spin and agenda really mean? When you can turn on one channel and it's talking about it in this way, and you can turn on another channel and it's talking, let's just use current example. We got Paul Pelosi who got attacked with a hammer, okay? Horrible, awful, terrible. You go to one news station and they say the problem is the Democrats are not doing anything about crime. And so these criminals are running around because the Democrats are not forcing crime and they're just letting these people out on the street and they do this kind of thing. So you go to the other channel and the other channel says this is mega MAGA anger being expressed. That's what this is about. The Republican Party goes out and they just spew all this venom and they're spin. It's all spin. It's all spin. Honestly, we don't know the truth about what happened yet. I don't know that we ever will, but I can tell you that the news will spin it in whatever direction they want to spin it because truth isn't important anymore. Agenda is important. Do you know why I think we have this problem with the news? How many of you are over 40? Over 40. Do you remember when the news was at 6 o'clock and 10 o'clock for an hour? That was all the news you got when Walter Cronkite was there. He didn't have time to give his opinion. All he could do is say, this president got shot today. It's a horrible thing, uh, okay? And so we turn news into 24 hours a day with 38 news channels that can't have anything happen without gathering five people together to give everybody's opinion on what they think happened. And truth goes out the window because agendas come in. <clears throat> And I'm not going to let the church off the hook when it comes to truth because inside the church, we've got to determine what is truth. We have a group of churches that say, hey, uh, all that stuff about the Holy Spirit and gifts and miraculous healing, well, that all went away in the first century. We call them cessationists. And, and in the church, we have a group I'm a part of this group. Uh, we have a group over here that says that's all real and relevant for today. What's the truth? We've got to define the truth so we can all be in the same place. How about eternal security versus a loss of salvation? Can you somehow give up your salvation? Can you somehow lose your salvation? Or are you sealed for the day of redemption? In case you don't know where I stand, you are sealed for the day of redemption. You're not sealed until you sin more. You are sealed for the day of redemption. If that's against what you're teaching here, I apologize. How about grace and holiness versus sin? Is the Christian free to sin? because Christ has died for the believer? Or should the believer have no desire for sin because Christ has died for my sin? How about mega churches versus home churches? I'm a pastor. I get this one a lot. Well, in Acts 2, they met in homes, and so we shouldn't have these big churches. They're evil, they're bad, and churches are terrible things. Listen to me, the reason they met in homes in Acts 2 is because they got kicked out of the synagogues because they believed in Jesus as the way. There was no way to meet at the synagogue, the gathering place. So you know what scripture says they did? They met in the portico of the temple, thousands of them, and they got saved. Mm. So do we need to go back to home churches? No. Do we need to have mega churches? No. We don't need to be having this question. We need to be believers who gather together to worship the Lord. I don't care if you do it in your home or in a big church. That makes no difference. I could go on, but what we need today is the Holy Spirit of truth. And I don't want to argue man's stupidity anymore because man has proven he can argue about anything. I want to be based and founded in the truth, and I can only get the truth from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit of truth is my only hope for knowing a truth that will set me free from lies, deception, stupidity, and confusion of the enemy. Again, many of you my age 
remember the bumper sticker that used to said, God said it, I believe it, that settles it? Yeah. Let me explain something to you. God said it, that settles it. It doesn't matter whether you believe it or not. <laughs> if God said it, it's settled, okay? And the church has got to become a group of people. Stay with me because you're going to think I'm going a direction I'm not. Has got to become a people who stand up and say, we've got to go back to truth. We've got to go back to truth. We have to go back to truth. Our chaos and insanity ensues, and nobody knows anything now. And I spend my time saying, what do you want to be called today? Yesterday, you were a woman, but today, you're a man. If I meet you tomorrow, you're going back to a woman, and I can't talk to you until you tell me which one you are, so I use the appropriate pronouns. This is craziness, because you're not a cat either. But we have to be one that stands on the truth. Here's the problem with Christians and truth. We use it as a baseball bat. We use it as a club. We come out swinging and say, God said this, and if you don't believe it, you're wrong. And we turn them off instantly. Because we've lost the ability to speak truth in love. I stand my ground and I say, I know that something has gone on, somewhere a disconnect happened because you were born a man and today you believe you're a woman. But let me ask you something. What makes you think that? Because when you look at the physics, when you look at the body, when you look at the science, when you look at the way you're born, you're obviously not a woman. So this is what I'm saying to you. There's a short circuit here. There's a, there's a, there's a happening. There's an injury. There's a, there's a fear. There's a hiding. There's something that has happened that has changed your mind. And the scripture says that we got to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. And if I want to renew something, I have to take it back to when it was new. Re, again, new when it was originally formed. So I've got to get back to the place of Adam and have my mind renewed in my relationship with God, but it applies to everything I do. I've gotta be renewed in my mind. It's gotta be fresh, it's gotta be real, it's gotta be based on truth. And so we as believers have to find that way to represent the truth, recognizing that we're actually representing God. Because they will see God in how we approach the confusion and the chaos and the lies. So we have to find this place where we stand our ground and say, I'm not movable on the truth. And I'm sorry you're confused, but I am here to help you get out of that place so that you can be free again. So that you can be free to enjoy yourself the way God made you. The Holy Spirit is given to us so we can know truth. I want to wrap this up this way tonight. I believe that in 2022 and going forward, the biggest challenge for Christianity, the biggest challenge for believers, the biggest challenge for the church in society is will we stand on truth? Now, I want you to hear me. This may be a little tough to swallow, but you got to get your head around it. Tolerance is not love. I am not showing you love by accepting your lie. Are you hearing me? So, so when someone comes forward with the lie, it is not loving of me to say, well, it's okay. That's your truth. You enjoy that. Jesus wouldn't have confronted you. He'd have just loved on you. Have you ever gone back in the Bible and saw how Jesus treated someone who is in sin? Lovingly. He said, go and sin no more. He said, get behind me, Satan. But then he turned around and prayed over the man. He was nowhere near a, I'll accept it, it's okay. You believe that, I want to be a Christian. That's not what Jesus would do. What Jesus would do is say, you're hurting because you're confused, and I want to bring you to the Father so you can get clarity. Here's what I'm saying tonight. We'll, we'll finish with this. I believe we've already gone down this road of trying to say, what would Jesus do? And it's made us a tolerant believer. 
It's made us a tolerant church. We just accept, if you want to believe that, you can believe that. I don't want to come down on you. I don't want to be mean. And what we've done is left people in confusion. We've left them in their hurting places. We've walked away and said, go ahead, demoniac. You can continue to run chained and screaming. Or we can meet the need as believers. And we can say, I'm not, I'm not angry with you. I'm not here to pick a fight. But you can't be happy if you're not in the truth. You can't be free if you're not in the truth. And I'm willing to stand and say, this is truth. I'm willing to stand in front of my kids and say, what they're teaching you is wrong. Uh, should we be teaching third graders about sexuality? No, not appropriate. So we have to stand and say, this is wrong. We're not angry people. We're not, we're not MAGA, bat-wheeling, hammer-wheeling people. We're just people who stand in truth. I think once you step out and you take the courage to say it is not like Jesus to let you believe the lie, it is more like Jesus to tell you the truth in love, then we become the people he's called us to be. Father God, I just thank you. I thank you that we can know truth. We're not arrogant about what you have shown us. We just understand the freedom in truth. And God, I pray for the church in this nation. I pray that the church stands up and says, we will not tolerate, we will not agree to the enemy's lies. But we will stand absolutely with love and stand on the truth, your word, God. Teach us that. Teach us a boldness in this nation. Teach us a boldness to care enough about people to give them the truth instead of cater to the lies. I love you, Father. And I believe all truth is in you. And you're more important to me. You're more important to me than to hide you from people who need you. In Jesus' name, amen.